Thank you. Thank you. It's the first time that I have an introduction in German. That was nice. So 10 years ago, I went on a, a trip with a couple of friends. We went to Corsica and we crossed the, uh, the island. It was a great experience. And at the end, you know, one of my friends had rented a car. And when I looked at the car, I said, oh, guys, no, we cannot get into this type of car. You know, I was this type of guy who, who had a Mercedes C-Class and was expecting you know, a couple of years from then, you know, we'll acquire probably an E-Class and then end up my professional life having an S-Class or something along those lines. And the experience really changed my perspective on the car, on the vehicle in itself and the features and functionalities that it had. And I went on and, and reflect on that over the following couple of years, it led me to quit my job and start working on creating a company to build eco-friendly, enthusiastic vehicles for the streets of Europe. Along the way, I met uh, uh, the CEO of a company called Local Motors, for which I'm working with today, and um, currently having a lot of fun you know, trying to change the way people are moving. Basically, Local Motors is a digital-born company. We're seeing ourselves as the company that is leading the third industrial revolution, taking digital and applying it to vehicles. The way we design, we build, and we sell is integrated in the digital world. Basically, we co-create vehicles, we collaboratively develop vehicles with community members from all over the world. There are currently over 53,000. They come from 130 different countries. And they are designers, engineers, fabricators, enthusiasts. And we engage them in this co-creation process. It enables us to go faster from an ID to a vehicle on the road. Once the vehicles are developed, we bring them to production in small production units. We call them micro factories. And we embed them locally. We embed them where the vehicles are going to be used. And we build locally relevant vehicles. We've done a couple of those vehicles. We produce them in the US and I'm in Europe to, to bring local motors here. And uh, here is an example. You know, we're also interested in technologies such as additive manufacturing. So we've done the first co-created 3D printed car. The technology is not there yet. We're improving every day and we're surfing those exponential curves and applying it to vehicles. But those are capabilities, co-creation, micro-manufacturing, 3D printing, or what we call direct digital manufacturing. Now we can apply those technologies to bigger challenges, one of which is the urbanization challenge. We engaged being in Berlin with the local players in the field of mobility. We asked the Urban Senate of Berlin, the public transport operator of, of Berlin, the people that are moving things around in the logistics area, people that are moving tourists around, and we provide that to the community. What we learned along the way is the following. 70% of the world population will live in an urban environment by 2050. 70%. People are flocking to the cities. And what you want to avoid is this, gridlock. This is back in China last year. This lasted 10 days. <laughs> one day, the maximum distance one could travel was one kilometer, one kilometer per day. Can you imagine that? So basically, what we came to a realization is that the car is not the answer. We need to define new, more sustainable, larger amount of people in, that, that can sustain this increased rate of people wanting to get around inside cities. The effect that those grids lock have is planned to actually be in the region of $290 billion by 2030 for the US, Germany, UK, and France alone. $290 billion. Just to give you an idea, you know, the whole world has been shaken by this crisis, this economical crisis due to the debt in Greece. If we solve that problem, we could basically reimburse the whole debt of Greece in 15 months. So here is another alarming thing, is that today, you know, traffic has a big impact on the environment. 
Do you know where that is from? Any idea? Ah, London, good. You know, we could have guessed it's in China. You know, there's a lot of those being uh, floated around. This is London, this is where we live, this is Europe. In fact, in Europe, 90% of the population living in large cities lives at a level of polluants that is deemed harmful by the uh, European Commission. And so what we need to do now is to build more sustainable solutions to get us around. The future is going to be electric. You know, it's going to be either fuel cells or it's going to be battery electric vehicles. But there's not going to be internal combustion in the towns anymore. We cannot have that anymore. The vehicles are going to be lightweight. They're going to be recyclable. They're going to be upgradable. The ability to update your vehicle the same way you update your computer. Take the old generation sensors, the old generation battery and put the new generation in. But even if we convert all our vehicles to electric, we still haven't fixed the problem because we're today stuck in traffic. So how do we go about it? Well, today, 95% of the time, our vehicles stand still. They are parking on parking lots. Well, even worse than having this underused assets that some are now leveraging, such as you know, companies like Uber, when we're moving, when we're sometimes looking for a parking spot, today, 30% of the traffic in urban areas is due by people trying to find a parking lot. It's just crazy. Basically, what we believe is that we've reached peak cars. Now, local authorities are taking actions. You, know, you go to London, you've got zones where you have, to, you, know, you have traffic charge, you have to pay to enter a certain area. If you go to Paris, the mayor has said that they want to kick out the dirty diesel vehicles by 2030. In Oslo, they want to get rid of all cars by 2020. So there is definitely a trend that you know, more and more the vehicles, the cars, you know, what we know as us today operating, that's going to move away. And we need to find new solutions. There are already emerging solutions. This is, for example, a map of Berlin. The dots that you see there are representing the number of vehicles that are available in a certain area. Today, I live in Berlin, and I don't own a car because I don't need to own a car. I can leverage shared vehicles. There are over 4,000 today in Berlin. Now, if you share that with you know, more and more people and have that in more diverse areas, not just in the city center, but all over, then you're solving, to some extent, the problem. You don't have to have all those vehicle parts. You can share them with the rest of the community. Today, already, if you travel less than 10,000 kilometers, it's cheaper to not own a car and rely on those shared vehicles. The interesting thing also is that 80% of the people that have started to use car sharing are converted. They don't really want to own a car anymore. And so this is why we believe that the future of mobility is shared. It's going to be shared vehicles, it's going to be shared rides. Now, going back to the vehicles themselves, today, they are fairly deadly. Well, it's causing yearly 50 million injuries. People are, you know, some have uh, light injuries, some are losing their legs and things like that. It's crazy. Worse than that, people are also being, uh, uh, losing their lives. 1.25 million people are dying every year on the roads in the world. This represents the equivalent of 22 A320s, you know, those 150 people airplanes crashing every day. One plane crashing every one hour and five minutes. And we can fix this. So what we believe in is that the future is going to be driverless. The technology is here, it's evolving at an exponential rate, and the local authorities are taking actions also. They are enabling those technologies to be brought to market, passing regulation to allow autonomous vehicles to hit the market. They are also funding projects. So 
what we believe in is that we're entering a mobility revolution. When you're combining shared, sustainable, autonomous vehicles, you can completely redefine the world. Vehicle ownership is not going away. Of course, you still have people that are excited to drive a vehicle, to be the operator of the machine and get some adrenaline you know, going out on the uh, roads of the Alps, for example. But the thing is, is that ownership is going to become a hobby. A little bit like today, you, know, you still have people riding horses, but they do that for leisure. So that's where we're going. So just imagine the vehicles are shared, they are autonomous, they are sustainable. Basically, the vehicles will reroute themselves if there is a traffic jam, if there is a car accident. Well, in fact, there might be even be no accidents because the vehicles are better drivers than we are. We're going to regain public space. Remember those parking lots everywhere? Oh, just, I don't know if you've tried to find a parking lot here around. It's just a nightmare. Well, imagine getting rid of those, all those vehicles, all those parking lots. You can regain and you know, build green spaces, have the kids run around and have more green space inside the cities. The vehicles will also know that Gunter leaves his home every Monday morning at 8.30, and therefore the vehicles will pre-populate where the demand is. We will provide chauffeured experience to the mass. It's going to be super inexpensive, and it's going to be green. Today already, the kilowatt hour of renewable energy is on par with fossil fuels. And it's going to go down and down and down. So driving autonomous electric vehicles is going to be very cheap, and we're going to redefine business models. You know, those companies that today leverage unused assets, like Uber, well, they're going to be becoming operator of shared mobility, operating fleets of vehicles that buzz around in our cities. And it will enable the system to reach more people, because it's going to be less expensive. You're going to be able to reach more people. Today, the public transport network stopped at a certain point because after that, it's just non-economical. Lower the cost, then you can increase the reach. You can get people also that have disabilities, you know, blind people, get them on the road. They're able to go around. And so that's what we're doing today. Here is an example of a product that we're going to bring to market. It's called the Edgar 08. The vehicle is a smart minibus. It's called Edgar because our designer is Edgar Sarmiento. He comes from Bogota in Colombia. 08 is for the number of people that the vehicle can transport. It's upgradable, it's renewable, it's 3D printed. All those bells and whistles. And it's going to change the way we move around. It's just the first vehicle. We've got an Edgar 08 to do today. Tomorrow we can have an Edgar 02, a more compact version. We can go you know, upscale and have leather seatings and a cappuccino machine and uh, you know, the latest sighting in the glove box and provide an uber black type of experience. And tomorrow, you know, what is next? Well, what about flying vehicles? We're going to kick off a collaboration in the next couple of weeks with a local company or they are really all over Europe. Uh, but we're going to work on drones and what can it impact you know, all over the world. So, as a closing remark, here is just a quick photo. This is my wife and my two kids. What I wish is that, you know, as they grow up, they're not going to get into a road traffic accident and that they actually never have to learn to operate a vehicle. They have, there are better things to do so that they don't have to waste their time there. Thank you.